All this data is coming in all the time, but your conscious mind can't focus on it. So almost all of the data is being processed by the subconscious mind. The conscious mind can focus on anything and can control anything. Conscious mind can control blood pressure, heart rate, body temperature, anything it focuses on. There's nothing the conscious mind can't control. But the problem is this, because of its small size, it can only control a few things at the same time. All the rest of the control is left up to the subconscious mind. The relevance about this is, again, the subconscious mind was programmed and acquired from other people. So where did the programs come from? When did we start to put the programs in? Here's the most important data. The programming of your subconscious mind was already starting to download habits by the middle of gestation. Bef you know, halfway before you were born, you were already downloading information. How do you get this information? Because the fetus is inside the placenta inside the mother. And we talk about the mother providing nutrition from her blood to feed the fetus. But the fact is this, is nutrition the only thing that's in blood, yes or no? Yes. No, the emotional chemicals are in the blood, the hormones, the self-regulating factors that regulate the physiology, they're all in the blood. So when the mother is having an experience, the fetus has exactly the same experience. When the mother is happy, the fetus is happy. When the mother is sad, the fetus is sad. The mother is afraid, the fetus is afraid. If the mother rejects the child, because it might be uh, you know, questioning the survival of the rest of her family, that fetus already is being bathed in rejection emotion. It's already learned that. A great book, just take it down. The name of the book is Why Love Matters by Sue Gerhardt, G-E-A-R-H-A-R-D-T. Very important book about neural development. Talks about the fact that a child's personality is fully halfway developed before it's born. The personality is developed. And you might say, well, why would nature allow this to happen? And the answer is this. Because sperm and egg are generic. Who knows where they're supposed to be born and when they're supposed to be born? Who knows what's going on in the world when this baby is going to be born? Because it changes what the baby needs to survive. So nature prepared for that. It made the mother the Head Start program. The mother's perception of the world that she's living in is transmitted to the fetus so that the fetus is getting an experience of the world before it's born so it can adjust its genetics to fit the world. The uh, genetics through epigenetics are adjusted. Parents are genetic engineers. They're shaping their child based on their perception of the world. I said mother, but the father is totally tied into this whole thing. Why? If the father screws up, it messes up the mother, who then sends the signals to the child. So it's the father and the mother that are working on this. The child is responding and learning from midway through pregnancy on. And whatever the child is experiencing then, it changes the genetics of the child to fit that world. And there's a different genetics of a child that has to live in survival versus a child that's given an opportunity for growth. You make a street fighter in a, in a child that's been threatened. Bigger muscles, big hind brain for reflex to fight, compensation, reduced forebrain. A child's intelligence can be reduced 52% by a mother who is living in a fear environment. Why? Shifting into a reflex organism versus a thinking organism, which is supported in a growth environment. But then comes the next important years. And here's what's important. EEG, brain activity, reveals functions of our, of our brain. In a normal situation, how much time do I have? I just want to check that. Uh, quarter past. Quarter past. Ooh, okay, fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that what's happening is that the brain activity is reflected in EEG vibrational frequency. As adults, we have a whole range of activities up and down the scale, all different frequencies. But what's interesting, a child does not express it that way. A child expresses a ramping up of its EEG over its age. So for example, from zero to two, or actually before birth to two, a child is in delta. That's the lowest EEG. If you're in delta, you'd be sleeping or unconscious. It doesn't mean the child's sleeping or unconscious, though. The child, now think about this, the nervous system doesn't develop equally input and output. The nervous system develops first with the inputs, then the outputs. In other words, a child's brain is downloading data even though its muscles are not coordinated. It can't speak, it can't move, it can't coordinate, but it doesn't mean it's not downloading stuff. That part of the brain is working. So up to two years old, a child is like behind a plate glass window. 
It's observing the world but can't interact with the world. Then from two until six, the brain activity ramps up so its predominant state is theta. Theta is imagination. Of course, child between two and six lives in mixing the world of imagination and the real world. That's where it lives. Then, and only then, after six, it starts to express the next higher level, alpha, which is consciousness. And then by 12, it expresses the next higher level, which is beta, which is like schoolroom consciousness. This is why kids, when they pass this part, go into the next level of school with much more complex work going on. Stop. The child is not in consciousness as we know it for the first six years of its life. And you say, why would that be? And the answer is this, think it's logic. Consciousness requires thinking, yes? But if you have no database, what can you think about? Nothing. First you have to have data, then you can have thinking. So the brain is designed for the first six years in low frequencies, you know what these frequencies are? The hypnogogic trance state. A child is in a hypnotic trance for the first six years of its life. It downloads everything it sees and hears and everything you're not thinking, you're, you're thinking you're teaching the child. When you turn your back, the child's still recording everything you're doing. The child records everything, every nuance, it learns everything. And it does so without discrimination. Why? Consciousness hasn't gotten started yet. You need consciousness to think about it, but you can't have consciousness unless you have data. So the first six years is data with no discrimination. Whatever is taken in by a child in its first six years is given as a fundamental truth. Whatever it learns is true. It watches how the father responds to the mother, how the mother responds to the father, records that. If it's a boy, that's its story about life. It's gonna look for a woman that has the same characteristics as the mother and vice versa. And the idea is that there's no discrimination. The Jesuits, they would say, ha, Give us a child until it's six, and it will belong to the church for the rest of its life. What did they know? Whatever the first six years are, that's the rest of your subconscious programming unless you change it. If you don't change it, you will have the same behavioral programs you downloaded from your environment in your first six years of your life. And since we have not been conscious about that, we never recognized that the child was recording every word, every movement, every nuance, because it had to learn the rules of life. Because this period is the programmable state of the child. And this is the period where enculturation is learned. This is how do, how do I respond in society? What are the rules? Tell me truths about society because these truths will become my life. And if we don't tell them truths, we screw the system.